Now, let's go a little ahead in terms of that. And consider that, that the same point that we did in 2D, in 3D, but now restricted to 2D. So it's clear that if I have an stress state, whatever it is, maybe defined in the principal directions, or maybe defined in any Cartesian directions, I know sigma x, sigma y, tau xy, or sigma 1, sigma 2, uh, yeah, that's it. And from each, uh, I can pass from one each other by the formulas we have seen before, whatever. Using these formulas, in terms of this angle, I could define what are sigma beta and tau beta for any beta, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So for any normal direction of the plane, for all planes in every direction. So, and they would be provided by the former equations, which now can, this one can be rewritten, just uh, passing that for the, uh, at the other height in that way. Look. And tau did that. So here are all sigmas and taus that I could have, sigma beta and tau beta. Look, if I square this side, and I square this side, so the other side too, and sum them up, what do I obtain? Squaring this side, I have sigma minus sin of 1 plus sigma 2 divided by 2, square, plus tau square at the left hand side. And at the right hand side, we have this term which is common, sigma 1 minus sigma 2 square divided by 2. And here we have cosine square to beta plus sine square to beta, which is 1. So beta disappears here. So that is an equation that has to be fulfilled by all sigmas and tau that I could, be, could obtain by uh, any beta, okay? What is this equation, the locus of the points fulfilling these equations? Look, if I just play or consider uh, now a plane where the uh, abscise corresponds to the values of taus, the taus that I obtain here, and I plot in uh, and ordinates in abscises the values sigma, okay? Look that now tau can be positive or negative, because if positive is that size, negative that size. Now tau is a positive negative. So points here, points fulfilling these equations for any beta would be everywhere or can, can, can stay in both the left-hand side, right-hand side, upper side, down side of the, this plane, in the, four, in the full plane, in the principle. But now this equation says that no, that there are not any, because all them have to fulfill this equation. And these equations, look, is again the equation of a circle, where the center is sigma 1 plus sigma 2 divided by 2, that's the center. And the radius is that term here, which is sigma 1 minus sigma 2 divided by 2, which is that. So that is a, a circle centered into the midpoint of sigma 1, sigma 2, and passing through sigma 1, sigma 2, okay? So the questions, the most questions, where is the locus of all possible points that I could obtain by changing beta from 0 to 360 degrees is that circle, and that is called the Mohr circle, okay? Look that this Mohr circle also provides signs of stresses in that case, and of tangential stresses. So can be here and there. So again, answers to questions. What is the maximum normal stress that I, ha that I have in any plane like that? Varying beta, sigma one. What is the minimum, sigma two? S sigma three, and at that stage, it doesn't play any role. So just we consider sigma two, and that sigma three can be larger or smaller, intermediate, it doesn't play any role. When we pass to three dimensions, we should then reorder the stresses, okay? So this is the locus. No point, no point can stay outside here. That is, if I just consider beta, different betas, I cannot find points outside the circle. And it's also proven that, uh, that for any point here, if I get a point here, that is, that's proven here, okay? If I have a one point in the, in the circle, I can determine that angle and the thermal is precisely two beta, because that thermal fulfills the equations, the equations that can be extracted for beta in that, in the, for, of the plane. So that, 
that can be proven, as it's, it's proven here, that the point which is the plane, which is represented in the Morse to the plane by a certain point, sigma theta on the plane, is characterized by an angle beta with respect to the first stress, for the first principal stress, which is that, two beta. Okay, so if I move from this plane clockwise, anticlockwise, an angle beta, for this plane, for the plane sigma one, what is the representative point? That, right? That is the representative point of the plane. I didn't mention that, but I will do now. If that is the plane where sigma one acts, the re representative point in the, in the Morse space is that, because sigma, normal sigma is sigma one, tangential sigma is zero, and in that plane, normal sigma is sigma two, tangential sigma is zero, okay? So these are representative points of the first principal plane, and this is the relative point of the second principal plane. Okay? So now I just ask the question, what happens if I w move from that plane and I consider another plane characterized by normal who's f that forms an angle beta uh, with the first principal stress direction, beta being positive in that sense, okay? Well, what I have to solve is that the solution for the angles, the solution for the angles, okay, sinus of cosinus of beta, and replace here uh, the solutions, and I obtain that cosinus of beta and sigma beta can be computed, two beta, sigma two beta, can be computed in that way, okay? which is sigma minus a divided by r, a being the center, okay? So, and sinus of two beta is tau divided by r, r being that distance here. What, look at this point, fulfills exactly that. What is the sinus of this angle? Is since the, the, the value, the, is the, the, sign, the, the, the sign of this angle is tau divided by this distance, which is, uh, uh, tau divided by r, which is that. And the cosinus of this angle, which is the cosine of this angle, which is sine sigma minus this distance, which is a, divided by r, is the cosinus of this, the cosine of this angle. So effectively, that point is the one that analytically corresponds to that plane. So we have a rule here. If I have the Moore's, the Moore's circle, then if I want to compute what are the stress state characterized with a, a normal stress and tangential stress with sign of a plane which forms with, whose normal forms with sigma one an angle beta, beta being positive or beta, whatever, beta. I have to move from the representative point of sigma one in the sense in the same sense that the angle beta, and then the point twice this, this angle, twice this angle, okay? And the point they obtain provides me sigma and tau, which are the ones they're looking for, okay? If the angle was negative, imagine that now instead of this angle, I had that angle, right? Or that, an angle negative, an, a, a, a trace like that, so the angle is negative. Now the rule says I have to move from this point, twice the angle in the same sense that going from sigma one to sigma beta. If sigma beta goes to that way, the normal goes to that way, then I would have to move in that sense. So this is a graphical construction that provides me also the two sides of the problem. So uh, how to compute given the Mohr circle, which can be computed if I know the principal stresses, for instance, if I know the principal stresses, how would I construct the Mohr circle? I put the center in the half point, and I trace a radius which is half the value of the difference, and I could compute the, the Mohr circle. And now I can compute graphically the stresses in any plane passing through the point. Just by moving from this point in the sense that going from the point to the normal to the plane, in the same sense, moving twice the angle. 
By the way, what is the maximum tangential stress, positive tangential stress, that can be found in any of these planes? Can you say? The maximum value for the tangential stress that can be found by changing beta. Isn't that this one? So at that point, the tangential stress, how much is at this point tangential stress? Sigma 1 minus sigma 2 divided by 2, the radius, plus the radius. So that's the maximum. And what is the minimum in the sense that being negative? Minus oh, sigma 2 minus sigma 1 divided by 2. So a lot of information can be found just looking at the point. Okay? For instance, if the circle was placed at the left-hand side, at that left-hand side, what could we say about the stress state, the normal stresses, at all planes of the point? They would be? Imagine that I, I, we, we will go there. Imagine that this circle is plot, or the resulting circle is just at the negative side of the uh, upside uh, axis. That, mean, that would mean, imagine that plot here, that all sigmas in all planes would be negative. So all sigmas would be compressive. So the material in all planes works at compression. If we, in geotechnics, we look for the material working in compression because our materials, the lands, rocks, in general, don't sustain any, don't resist any, any tension. So that's something that would have to be checked in a geotechnical problem, that all stresses are negative. So the Mohr circle is fully at the negative side. So a lot of information. We'll go back to that. That's a very important concept. And we'll, um, we'll, we'll recall that issue in different chapters that uh, are coming in that, in, the, in, the, in, the, in that course. OK? By the way, here, by playing around, uh, we have links that may help you to play I mean, in, online, seeing how are the Mohr circles and so on. Maybe you can just enjoy some time uh, with it. Okay?